Hello everyone, my name is Sa'am al Ghanim, and today we'll be going over the imaging of the female pelvis. I prepared a short quiz for you and we'll go through it together. I will be reading each question and once I'm done, you'll have 10 seconds to answer before I reveal the correct response. Here's our first question. You're reading the ultrasound report of a female pelvis and it says the endometrial thickness measures one millimeters. This finding is normal for the following patients except All right, so the correct answer is B, 25 years old on days 20 of her menstrual period. Why? Because at day 20, the endometrium should be in the secretory phase and much thicker, which is unlike what we see over here. It often can go up to eight to 16 millimeters, but here, a thickness of one millimeter would be abnormally thin. However, in a child or adolescent or even postmenopausal woman, or even earlier in the cycle at day five, the thin endometrium is expected. All right, next question. You are reading the ultrasound report of a 55-year-old female. The radiologist is highlighting a two centimeter thickness of the endometrium. Your differential diagnosis includes all except. So the correct answer here is A, physiological luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. Correct answers include all of the following ones. The only one we can rule out is luteal phase is because she's postmenopausal. The thickness should be less than five millimeter, if not on hormonal replacement therapy. Anything more would be abnormal and warrants further evaluation. You are performing a pelvic ultrasound for a postpartum lady four weeks after vaginal delivery. You notice that the endometrium is echogenic and measures three centimeter in thickness. You apply color Doppler and detect both arterial and venous flow within it. Your diagnosis is. All right, the answer here is B, confidently diagnosing retained products in conception and admit the patient. The key here is the vascular flow that we see inside the endometrium on colored Dopplers. Clots are often avascular, so if you see any blood supply within a thickened endometrium, that strongly points towards retained products. Uterine fibroids appearance on different imaging modalities includes all of the following except. The correct answer is C, hyperechoic on ultrasound. So fibroids are usually hypoechoic, sometimes heterogeneous, but not hyperechoic. On MRI, they are isointense with the myometrium on T1 and they enhance with IV contrast. Rarely they may be seen in the X-ray, only if they're calcified, which we see over here. Your patient wants to locate an IUCD that was placed 20 years ago. What is your first modality of choice? All right, so the correct answer is pelvic ultrasound, B. Ultrasound is safe, fast, and non-invasive. X-ray can show the metallic IUCDs, but ultrasound gives us both the position and relation to the uterus. Here we see how an IUCD appears across different imaging modalities. On X-ray, most IUCDs are radio-opaque, so they appear as a bright device in the pelvis. It's useful if the IUCD is suspected to be displaced. However, on ultrasound, it's the first line choice. Metallic or copper IUCDs give a strong echogenic line with a posterior shadowing. With the Mirena or the hormonal IUCD, we see the echogenic arms and the shadowing effect in the endometrial cavity. Meanwhile, on CT, the IUCD is also clearly visible. The CT scan shows if it has migrated outside the uterus. An MRI is usually seen as a signal void, so it's rarely needed. You are looking at a pelvic ultrasound and there is a Mirena coil in a good position within the endometrial cavity. What do you expect the endometrial thickness to look like? So 
So the correct answer here is B, bend. Leaving our gestural from the Morena coil bends the endometrium by suppressing proliferation. That's why it's protective against the endometrial hyperplasia and bleeding. Five-year-old child inserted a toy rectally or vaginally, according to her caregiver. You perform a clinical examination and can't locate the object. What imaging modality can you use to find it? The correct answer is C, plain x-ray of the abdomen. Most foreign objects are radio-opaque and x-ray is quick and avoids unnecessary sedation. Ultrasound may miss objects and CT or MRI are excessive in this case. Next, you are reading a report of a pelvic ultrasound for a 55-year-old lady. There is a description of a mixed hypo and hyperechoic lesion in her right ovary with increased vascularity within it on colored Doppler measuring 5 cm in diameter with some free fluid in the cul-de-sac. Your differential diagnosis includes... The correct answer here is D, ovarian cancer. This lady is postmenopausal and presents with a complex ovarian mass. The red flags here are mixed equigenicity, increased vascularity, and free fluid in the pouch of Douglas, all of which are suspicious for malignancy. At her age, physiological or hemorrhagic cysts are unlikely, and ectopic pregnancy is not possible. Ovarian torsion would typically show reduced rather than increased blood flow. Last question. Your relative was suspected to have bicornate uterus. Which modality of choice is used for diagnosing malarian duct anomalies? So the correct answer here is D, MRI of the pelvis. MRI is preferred for malarian duct anomalies because it clearly shows both the uterine cavity and the external structure of the uterus with excellent soft tissue detail unlike the other modalities. That brings us to the end of our short quiz. The key message is always interpret imaging in the context of the patient's age, cycle, and clinical history. Thank you so much for your attention.